Why do car dealers hate cash buyers so much? First off, car dealers don't really like that cash buyers have so much influence in car negotiations and that they're just not that easily persuaded to spend more money. There's a cap on what they're willing to spend, and that cap is determined by what's in their checking account. So technically, it's very true that dealers typically miss out on a big profit opportunity that is connected to every other car deal that they do. And they don't like that very much. Oh. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, known on YouTube as The Homework Guy. Ever since we published one of our top videos that really blew up our channel in 2020, it was titled, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash. That video was a home run because many people thought cash was king in the car business. Clearly, it is not. You see, car dealers often don't like cash buyers because it can disrupt their preferred business model, which is heavily reliant on financing and add-on products. They don't just want to make some money on a car purchase. They want to make a ton of money, and they are often willing to tell buyers completely fabricated lies to fatten up their car deals. To any dealer out there watching today, let me just say this. We have never objected to your right to make a profit. What we object to are all the slimy tactics you use to get there. All the lies and deceitful actions you owners and dealer employees would never want to be treated by others in any industry the same way that you treat your customers. If you fail to understand that, you've just been working in a dealership environment for way too long. Get a grip on it. Here to explain all the main reasons a cash buyer is despised so much by car dealers is the amazing Elizabeth. Well, here's the big one at number one. There's a loss of profit from financing. As Kevin pointed out, dealers these days make a significant portion of their profit through financing. When a customer finances through the dealership, the dealer typically earns a commission or a finance reserve from the bank or lender. When factoring in other upsells like warranties and other junk add-ons, the dealer's profit can increase significantly. In a moment, we'll dive into a breakdown of how much more a dealer might make percentage-wise on the car deal. On the list of why dealers don't like cash buyers at number two, no add-ons incentive. Dealers often upsell additional products like extended warranties, service packages, gap insurance, paint and fabric protection packages, and other extras when buyers finance. They can hide all this stuff in the loan. Yep. These add-ons increase the overall loan amount, benefiting both the dealer and the lender. Cash buyers, however, are less likely to purchase these extras because they're more focused on the final cash price. They know how much money they have to spend, and they generally can't be pushed to spending more. You should know that profits from add-ons and upsells are huge because the dealer cost in these items are in the 20% to 50% range maximum, depending on what the product is. We're talking about things like extended warranties and service contracts. Dealers make substantial profit from selling extended warranties and service contracts. The profit margin on these products can be anywhere in the 50 to 60% range. For example, if the dealer sells an extended warranty for $2,000, they easily earn $1,000 to $1,200 in profit on just that one product. Gap insurance is another high margin product. Dealers typically charge anywhere from $500 to $1,000 for gap insurance, but the actual cost of this insurance to the dealership is a three to $600 range, depending on what type of gap policy it is, leading to a typical profit margin of 40% or more. Other add-ons are things like paint protection, fabric protection, tire and wheel protection, or anti-theft devices that don't do a darn thing. They also come with huge markups, huge profit margins ranging near 100%. Exactly. These extras can easily add another $1,000 to $3,000 in profit for the dealership, depending on what the customer agrees to. Reason number three, dealers don't like cash buyers. The dealer has less control over pricing. Financing deals allow dealers to be more flexible with pricing. They might offer bigger discounts on the car itself because they know they'll make it up with financing profits. Sure. Cash buyers, on the other hand, typically negotiate harder on the vehicle price because they're looking for the best deal up front and they know how much money they have to spend. That's right. Number four, the dealership's cash flow. Cash buyers disrupt the dealership's cash flow strategy. By financing, dealerships can get immediate cash from lenders and keep their own cash reserves stable, which has importance for their daily operations. Cash buyers force the dealership to process a direct cash transaction, which they believe doesn't offer them the same benefits of liquidity. Reason number five, dealers have less leverage over customers. With financing, dealers have more leverage to retain customers for future services, maintenance, and even trade-ins because customers might return for financing or other upgrades. 
cash buyers don't create this long-term relationship and are less likely to return for high profit margin services. While cash might be advantageous for the buyer, it's often seen as less profitable for the dealership. And the truth is, it is less profitable. Yep. That's why dealers are always less enthusiastic and will most often offer fewer incentives to cash buyers. Sometimes they even tack on a cash fee. Yeah. Of course, the fee is nonsense, but they try that tactic because it results in them missing out on other profit-generating sales. If you thought, well, there has to be some history behind this focus by car dealers in this change in business model away from the cash is king thinking of years ago, you'd be right. Here's what got the ball rolling. Car dealers began shifting to a financing model when selling cars in the early 1900s, particularly in the 1920s and 30s, as the automobile industry grew and more consumers sought to purchase vehicles. Here's a brief overview of the key developments in this transition. The first contributing factor of the introduction of automobile installment plans in the mm -hmm. 1920s. In the early 1920s, automobile manufacturers like General Motors, GM, recognized that prices for cars were already high compared to average household incomes, so much so that the average consumer couldn't afford to pay the full price of a car up front. This was in the 1920s, friends. Yep. In response, GM established the General Motors Acceptance Corporation, GMAC, in 1919, which allowed buyers to purchase cars on installment plans. This was a pivotal moment because it allowed more people to buy increasingly pricier cars, increasing demand and car sales. It wasn't long before other manufacturers and dealers quickly followed suit. That's right. And the second factor is the expansion of dealer financing. So by the 1930s, as the Great Depression hit, consumers had even less cash to make large purchases like cars. During this period, dealerships increasingly offered in-house financing to keep sales moving. Imagine that. They were writing loans to people who were most likely broke. Banks and other financial institutions also became more involved in car loans, further institutionalizing car financing itself. And the third factor, along comes post-World War II boom, the 1940s and 50s. After World War II, the booming economy and mass production of cars led to a surge in car ownership. Financing became the dominant method of purchasing a vehicle. Banks and credit institutions worked closely with dealerships, and it became common for car buyers to finance their purchases over several years. Car loans evolved with longer terms and lower down payments, making vehicles more accessible to the growing middle class. This was the beginning of what was eventually going to be the financial ruin of many consumers. Yeah. Here's the fourth factor, the rise of dealer financing as a revenue stream on its own. In the 1970s, dealerships started to see financing not just as a means to help customers, but also as a lucrative part of the business for themselves. It was during this time that dealers began earning commissions or reserves from banks and lenders for financing the deals. This led to financing becoming one of the primary profit drivers for car dealerships. Over time, extended loan terms, leasing options, and other financial products were added to the mix. This new focus gave birth to a rash of companies who fell under the umbrella category of products known as ADP. Hmm. Not to be confused with the payroll company, ADP in a dealership model means additional dealer profit. That's right. The fifth factor, the auto industry entered the modern era of financing and add-ons. That was from 1990 to present. In recent decades, financing has become even more sophisticated, with dealerships pushing a wide variety of loan options, leasing, and additional products like warranties, gap insurance, and service contracts. Financing allowed dealers to earn money not just from the sale of the car, but from interest, add-ons, and other financial services. This shift to finance-driven models has shaped the predatory attitude in how most car dealerships operate today. As you can see, friends, there's a lot of history behind the evolution of today's car dealer model, and it's clearly gone from bad to worse. By the post-World War II era, financing had become the dominant method for purchasing cars, and dealerships increasingly relied on it for additional revenue. Since this time, dealers have learned to hate a cash buyer, and in turn, buyers of all types have learned to hate car dealers. What's interesting is that in 1976, Gallup had polled U.S. citizens on what was the least to most trusted profession, and they do this every year. Sitting dead last on the bottom back then was a car salesman, <laughs> and that was already in 1976. Wow. In the most recent Gallup poll, there are new bottom dwellers. The bottom is occupied by members of Congress and senators, both sitting in the cesspool below the often despised car salesman. Yep. What I can say about the car salesman is that at least he's not the one running the country or pretending to, like a <laughs> member of Congress or a senator. <laughs> That's right. Well, speaking of slimy characters, if you'd like to skip the heartache, the headache, the BS, 
and get a hassle-free car deal, visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and read up on our hassle-free car buying service. Our Google reviews are filling up with amazing reviews from people who go through the process. Tons of reviews like this one from beautiful Louisa. She writes, I wanted to surprise my daughter with a new car, but that magical moment was ruined when I started shopping around. All the hassle was stressing me out. Honestly, as a Hispanic woman, car dealers made me feel that I wasn't a worthy customer. So looking for tips in YouTube, I found the homework guy. Hiring them was the best decision for me. No more hassle and saved money on top. I bought an Acura Integra 2024. The average price was 41000 and Awesome Stewart got me a deal of 36500 including the taxes. All I had to do was go to the car dealer to sign the paperwork, and I was out of there in an hour. She included pictures of her daughter's new car. That's an amazing experience, Louisa, just the way car buying ought to be. That's right. By the way, as I have stated in previous shows, our hassle-free car buying service is the only car buying service that saves you the hassle of going it alone with a dealer finance officer. Also, when you hire us, either me or Kevin will personally take every intake call. You get to talk directly to us, and we don't have layers of bureaucracy between us and our viewers, and we like it that way. You get to talk directly with us. What's really different about our car buying service compared to others is that we are the only truly customer-focused service provider that you can find. We don't have other motives behind our interest in helping you. For example, we will never go back to a dealer we did a car deal with to see if they want to join a dealer referral network, like others are doing right now. We never want to be anything like the Costco Auto Program with a lame dealer referral network. We know those things always fail. They suck. Yep. Thanks to all of you out there in our audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty. And if you want our direct help with your car deal, text Liz today at 701-441-3399. In closing... I just want to take a moment to talk to those of you out there who want to get the most out of your current or future vehicle. That's super cool with us. You can learn what's a good, reliable, new or used car to buy in the first place, or you can get advice on best mechanical practices for your vehicle. To do all of that, we have an in-house automotive expert on board with us. He is exceptionally talented and will help you get the most out of your current or future car. His name is Alex Stevens. He's a former race team mechanic who has built a ton of different cars from the ground up and still doing it. He has numerous automotive connections and knows so many great people in the mechanical field, he can get to the bottom of any problem car related. If you've been having an ongoing problem with your current vehicle, you need to talk to Alex. You'll be amazed at what he knows about your car without seeing it. Just go to our website and click on the pull down menu and find Ask the Auto Expert. Alex Stevens is available at a low introductory price, and he's beyond knowledgeable and talented. We have shows coming up featuring Alex. He will give his take on cars to avoid and why, and if you happen to own one of those bad cars, how to care for it so it doesn't leave you stranded on a roadside. If you buy the call with Alex, I promise you'll be delighted to talk to him. Either me or Liz will connect you to Alex. To all of our longtime subscribers, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire homework guy team. Thanks for listening.